Hello and welcome. So this video lecture is going to be focused on exploring some of the main principles that have come out of yin and yang theory. So in the history presentation, we looked at yin and yang in its infancy stages. And in those infancy stages, it was loosely translated as yang being the sunny, sunny aspect of the mountain and yin being the shadow or the dark side of the mountain. So this is really the beginning of yin and yang, and from that we really get the idea that there's this thing called contrast. So, you know, we've got light and dark, male and female, hot and cold. And this is what is most commonly associated these days with yin and yang, is this idea of contrast. And what contrast really sort of brings us into is that in order to know something, we have to know its opposite. We have to be familiar that its opposite it also exists. For example, in order to be happy, to experience happiness, to experience joy, we also need to have some experience with sadness or unhappiness. For without knowing unhappiness, how do we know what happiness is? If we were happy all the time, we wouldn't know we were happy. We would just be walking around smiling all the time would have nothing to compare it or contrast it to. And so this really opens us up and shows that all potentially experiences within the human realm are there naturally and it's actually part of the deal, it's part of the game. And therefore no particular experience is actually wrong and therefore no particular experience is actually right in its fullest expression. So uh, the human experience and the world of nature and all, all its expressions is just various expressions of contrast. And we actually need its opposite contrasting element in order to give its, its opposite some kind of meaning to us. So when we can look at ourselves, our experiences in the natural world in this way, I think it brings a, a level of peace, a level of kind of acceptance, instead of always conflicting, and that's not right, and that's right. And, you know, there's always this conflict, but instead uh, we need the contrast in order to experience the full spectrum of the human experience. So another principle that comes out of it is this, this idea of an underlying order, an orderly principle underneath everything. So because of the constantly changing nature uh, of the human experience and when we watch and observe the natural world, there's a constantly changing phenomenon. And uh, while the human has a tendency to try and understand um, what's going on, I think a lot of the time we get to a point when humans have a tendency to think that it's just chaos and that there's actually no order and science is our best shot at deciphering any order if there's any in the universe. But for the Taoists and to the Orientalist is that the yin and yang symbolism and the underlying philosophy is saying that there is a natural order in place even though it appears chaotic, even though the human experience appears chaotic, there is actually an underlying orderly principle. And that potentially, well, the human experience, the human mind is incapable of fully grasping the underlying order of nature. And so, again, just talking briefly about change. So, because yin and yang its nature is constantly changed into each other, uh, there's always this flux, there's always this appearance of chaos going on. Um, but again, it's related to order. So yin, yin and yang indicate to us that change is part of the process and that there's actually some underlying order. So it's okay, it's okay to just sit in, sit and relax um, and not get too wound up or try to control what's going on here. So some of the primary principles that come out is that it's non-absolute. So you can't have one full extreme at 100% and then not exist its opposite contrast. So you can't have absolute black 
Um, because if everything was black, we wouldn't even know what black was because we would be just uh, completely absorbed in blackness. We wouldn't know, we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't even be calling it black because we wouldn't know what black was because we wouldn't have white to compare it against. So therefore, it also indicates to all our philosophies and certain things is that you can't actually get to the absolute oneness of something. It's impossible, essentially, especially through the mind. And in our language, it's impossible as well. Uh, Lao Tzu talks about that those who speak of the Tao do not know the Tao, and those who do not speak tend to know the Tao. So indicating to us that it's not actually possible to completely encapsulate the full meaning of the universe in language or in maths or uh, in some conceptual way. Um, and so you have to come to a point of kind of acceptance that there's um, no way of absolutely knowing. And uh, this is kind of where we're getting into. This is the Taoist philosophy un underneath. So first of all, non-absolute. From this non-absolute, from this contrasting always going on, is that when you get down into it, there's actually no absolute right and no absolute wrong. Now, it's quite hard for a lot of people to accept no right and wrong. Uh, and that's fair enough, I understand where they're coming from. Though the expression found in nature is just expressing itself in its various forms. And as the human, how do we know what's really going on? Like, how can we understand that uh, the manifestation of nature is wrong? How can we claim that that manifestation is wrong? So therefore, uh, when you get down into the depths of it, there's actually no right or wrong. They're just expressions of nature in various forms. As we've mentioned before, change is a constant phenomenon. It is yin and yang are constantly merging into each other. When one gets too extreme, such as yang, say yang gets really, really strong, uh, the sun becomes really, really intense, it's only a matter of time before yin comes in. It has to come in. Uh, night will eventually fall. And there's also a good quote, I don't remember the exact words, but it's something like, the, the louder the thunder, the sooner it will pass. So this says indicates to us that uh, when something ex is expressing itself in nature in a full extreme way, it's more likely that it's just going to flip over to its opposite very quickly. And it tends to be those things that are slow and gradual, which will stay for longer periods before the shift will come. So that reminds me that sometimes, you know, people fall into depression. And actually one way of treating it, though it's not very accept uh, commonly uh, acceptable approach is that you allow the person to sink into the deepest state of depression and then there's going to be a, a shift once they hit rock bottom they call it then usually there's a massive shift towards you know a different way of looking at life but if you don't do that if you prolong that slow gradual um, uh, self-suicidal process then you know the shift might not come for some time so that's just a sort of extreme example of how change is always coming and going. Now the Taoists really got into this idea that uh, because of the governing or because of the orderly principle of yin and yang is that it's potentially self-governing. There's some higher energetic, natural, cyclic process, almost like a an organism, like the universe is made up of a self-governing organism. And therefore, there actually needs to be no God uh, interfering with what's going on here in the human world and in the universe. Because this yin-yang, this uh, self-orderly principles are actually governing everything without the need of God. So therefore, it is self-governing. Another principle is that because of its natural cyclic movement of change, there's actually no need to force anything. There's no need to force change upon nature. For if we're willing to wait long enough and, and to work persistently enough, is that it will happen of its own accord. And this plays out all the time. I, I observe it more and more in my life and in, the, 
picture is that if you're just willing to wait a little bit longer than trying to force your personal will onto something, a situation or a person, then eventually they actually come to their, you know, if you're trying to get someone to see a certain way, for example, um, it's sometimes better just to back off and then just leave them alone for a while and then actually they come to their own inside, inner workings, they come to their own um, realization by themselves and then they come back to you and then support what you're um, what you are trying to do. So uh, this way there's no force required. Nature tends to take care of itself and uh, if it doesn't um, shift the way you want it at this time, then either it's not the right time or it's never really meant to go, meant to happen at this time so uh, therefore it's better just to let go and go with the flow then we come to the last uh, major principle is that of virtue or skillful living and this is kind of an interesting one and it's kind of a little bit hard to uh, translate it simply means that when you become aware of its underlying organizing self-governing principle of what's going on in the human experience and in the natural world is that uh, when you align with that wisdom is that there's this natural skillfulness in life that comes up from within. Uh, it's not an egoic acquiring of a skill. It's not um, I'm getting smarter or you know I've learned something and then I apply it and I make you know, my life better. It's nothing to do with that. It's more to do with a natural wisdom that, that comes up. And this is kind of expressed, for example, when you just get a, a feeling to, you know, walk down the shops at a particular time. You don't really know why. You just get this sort of inner urge. And so you go down and then you happen to run into somebody that's, um, you start talking about something that's actually really relevant to what you're working on. And then they're connected to a friend that you know of who you haven't connected to with what for a while. And then these sort of sequence of events just unfolds very naturally, very organically. And that is an expression of just skillful living. So you're just allowing the natural process to unfold and life takes on a higher kind of form of beauty in a way. Okay, so we're going to look uh, throughout this course at how do these principles and how can they be applied to modern life? How, how can they be applied to my life? And so we're really going to talk about these principles in business and relationships and so on. Uh, but for now, I want you to complete uh, the yin yang quiz next. And this will give you uh, an indicator straight away whether you have sort of more yin characteristics or yang characteristics and how we can work with that to sort of bring ourselves back to more of a uh, uh, more of a natural organic uh, balance in between the two. Okay, so thank you.